hopefully the tornado doesn't blow us away. Do we mind? Well, I mean, I, I would rather not be blown away by a tornado. I have a plan for if we're torn away by, blown away by a tornado, but... What's your plan? Tuck and roll, or...? No. Do you feel that breeze? Yeah. I intentionally built this building so that it's porous, so that the wind won't blow it down. Just goes through it? Through it. Don't you feel it? You feel the breeze? I do feel it. All the hatches are closed, right? What should we, uh, what should we teach them today? You know? Teach, here, let me teach you this. You can sew with one bobbin, but if you have two, it's going to go better for you. Let me go get another bobbin. So now you are teaching them to sew with how many bobbins? Two bobbins. We're not really teaching anybody. If you're watching this, you probably know how to sew. Although I do watch people do shit that I'm never going to do. Yeah. I just like, I call it like wholesomeness, right? I'm watching all the, the doom and gloom and oh my God, the end of the world's coming and oh shit, I better go plant 20 more trees today and I better get fucking six more sheep. And then I'm like, I need to watch something I don't know, wholesome, right? Something that, I, I don't know, I don't know. Just something uh, of entertainment value perhaps. Okay, both bobbins are in. We're gonna build this thing. I'm gonna show you how to do this. Well, I'm gonna show you how I do this. That's always the important factor, right? To be able to differentiate between uh, this is the way or this is my way, because there's a lot of ways. I'm just gonna kind of go through the process of elimination, right? I have all these parts. I'm pretty sure what they are, but I'm definitely you know what this piece is, so I'm just gonna go ahead and build this piece first. Should we tell them? Should we tell them what we're building? I don't think we ever do. Well, we say we never do anything, but then we do. It always slips, yeah. Um, we're gonna sew through some foam on this one. We've never sewn through foam in one of these videos. And some people's machines will do it, and some won't. first few years uh, I was building stuff, sewing through thicker foam was not an option for me because of the lightweight machine I was using. So all of my designs were done so in a manner that I didn't have to sew through uh, foam. I haven't built one of these in a long, long time. One of these days you're going to take some stuff out of the bin and you're going to say, man, I just built one of these yesterday. Maybe. But most of the stuff I build is, it's all brand new stuff. So I'll build it a couple times. Or it's something for a friend or it's something that's super easy to build. Like on the weekend when I have some time. Um, when, when most people are playing video games or watching TV, I just turn on like a YouTube video. While I give you guys shit for sitting and doing nothing, um, my sitting and doing nothing, I just happen to also be doing something at the same time. So I'll build, I'll sew all the parts for a few dozen wallets or a few dozen pistols, something super easy that I don't have to think about. Um, and I'll just consume content at the same time. But I do think uh, if you're playing video games that you're wasting your fucking time. There was another PC, yeah, here it is. And if you're watching TV, you're also wasting your fucking time. Do you have Netflix? Yeah, but we don't ever turn it on. Yeah, I've, I've never had Netflix. I don't own Netflix. I had Hulu for two years and I didn't know it. I just found out the other day. Hulu. Hmm, I haven't done these in a long time. I'm not sure how, how I want to do this. 
Let me go get a sample and see how I did do this. She might like that. Okay, I think I know how I did this. So I'm gonna take this seam here and I'm gonna offset it just a little bit. And then I'm gonna take, ooh, the whole sewing machine rolled. The casters aren't locked. We actually roll this out here every time we do one of these videos. So I'm gonna sew that right there. And I'm gonna take this slack and kind of push it under here. So I'm right about the middle. And this is nothing other than aesthetics where this center line is gonna be. But what I'm doing is I'm spacing out the slack in this Cordura. And it's locking the Cordura top and bottom through the foam that we put inside. It's going to make a nice, tight, no wrinkle uh, product when we're done. Hopefully that's what we're doing. Hopefully that's what you're doing. It's definitely what I'm doing. machine to act different to foam? Um, yeah, it will. Yeah, it'll act different. Maybe I want to move this. Yeah, it'll, it'll, uh, sew different. It'll tension different. It might act a little different depending on the foam you use. There's, a. Uh, different stiffnesses to foam and spring rate, you know how fast it springs back. Yeah. Do you break more needles in foam or zippers? Um probably zippers, but I don't I don't really break needles anymore. Foam your problem with foam, it's not gonna be the foam that breaks it, it's going to be that you're sewing through something thick and it lets the needle flex, especially if you're pulling or moving on it. So what it does is the work will pull the needle and you'll strike that hole there. You, you'll miss the hole and you'll hit the piece that the hole's in, right? The, in this case, it's in the uh, feed dog. So when that happens, typically it's gonna drive this here. This is your needle bar. It's gonna drive this up here and it's just gonna move your needle bar. But it could also knock the machine out of time, turning other pieces also. Now this has a release, which some machines don't have, but if I knock that out, if it's really bad, it'll just knock it out. It'll, it'll break that release right there loose, and you can just push the button and then put it back right into, it'll click back in place, um, kind of. Okay, there's that. So. These ones are built in a manner that I don't have to tuck any of these, so I'm just going to pull this up. I'm going to conceal all this um, at a later point, so it's going to look nice and clean. I am getting thicker here. You can hear the machine acting differently. Do we know what I'm making yet? A lunchbox? A lunchbox. That's exactly what I'm doing. Sounds like I'm out of thread. I am out of thread. It seems like I need to build Scully a, a cooler bag. It's, I think so. How many fucking cooler bags does he have? He shows up with a different cooler or cooler bag every week. I don't know. How many Pepsis, Diet Pepsi can he drink? They, they sent him a fucking truckload. I feel like he needs to lay off of them a bit. I feel like it's probably not good for him. To lay off of them? No, to drink anything out of a can.
But maybe if you take it away from him, he'll just instantly pass. Out? At this point. Like die? Yeah. Yeah, I think it's probably Pepsi that's holding him together. JD rolled and die at Pepsi. You know what water bears are? Nope. I'm going to try it on them and see what it does. So I'm creating these channels here so that you, as a small guy, if this is too big for you, you can actually cut this and sear it. I'd prefer you do it with a soldering iron or hot knife, but you can cut this and then just sear it with a lighter or heat something up, a knife blade or something very hot and then sear it properly. And that's why these channels are here. You can just cut this right up against one, about a quarter inch, burn it, and then just discard however many inches of this you need. And I say small guys, because if you're too big, this isn't going to do anything in any ways. You're not going to be able to add to it. I also have no lighter. All right, I need a lighter and a, and a ruler. How many of those rulers do you have? Just one. That's why I always have to go find it. <laughs> Shit, I don't have a trash can out here either. I had a few of these. It's like the Smokey the Bear. Only you can prevent forest fires. Um, I had a bright orange one too, but it, it broke. It's never you that breaks your own shit though. It's always somebody else. Well, you ban all the same color ruler that you only have. That's for real, yeah. We buy rulers and none of them look like this. That's why all my stuff is very uh, different than everything else in the shop, so I can identify mine. Just like scissors. I buy them expensive scissors that cost way more than these. Because those look very unique. Hmm, which one's which? Here we'll go this way. Pretty sure. I'm not 
not looking. Good, because I'm not, I'm not sure myself <laughs> what I did here, how I did this. The webbing goes all the way through. Wow, that seems like a, that's a lot of work. I wonder why I did it that way. All right. Is it the best way or just a lot of work way? Um, it's probably, it's probably the best way. Well, that's why you did it. But looking at a lot of stuff that we did a certain way, it's just because I never visualized it 20 years ago, you know, a different way. And a lot of it, we could, we could make it easier and there's no reason for this to be this way, right? So this is, this is an H harness and I'm sewing through all this material and all this foam and I'm putting this piece of webbing here, right? So this piece of webbing could just go on the ends and it doesn't need to go here. There's, I've never seen it come off, right? If I was doing padded slings, we did padded slings a lot of them this way. We never saw a failure. Whereas we could just leave this end open here and fold it under and put your webbing inside there for an inch and tack it. I've never seen a sling come apart that's made that way and we've seen a lot of them made that way over the years. So, and at which case you wouldn't have to go through all the foam either at that point that way. But it's just, it's perception. You can, it, it goes back to when I say trust, trust your materials, trust your machine, trust your thread. And people don't, right? Or, or it's just a talking point. They don't have a reputation for themselves yet or a name. So that's kind of what they're building it on, right? They do things, look, this has more thread or this is built better because of this. But there never was an identified problem with the one that they're comparing it to. With that said, this here, because of the way I built this, we're using that webbing, that full length, to cover up these raw edges here. Whereas we could have sewn this inside out, turned it right side out, and then those edges would not have been there. But this is how we did it years ago, because we could get it really tight this way also, um, and not have to worry about it. Whereas the other way, it would kind of be sloppy. So. The other thing also on this, where did I put this? This here, if we were doing a solid color one, I would have captive, I would have made this captive in between there. But it doesn't need to be captive in between there. Um, especially because I'm about to sew a piece of cordura over this that covers that whole piece of webbing there. So why did I do that? And that the real answer is, I don't know why I did it back in this way. Because there's definitely a much simpler way to build Was it based off this. of looks or just... I don't know. I don't, I don't... I really don't remember why. I was trying to get the... I was trying to get the product stiff with no wrinkles. And uh, we, were, we were fighting it for a while. You know, how we were putting the foam in there and stuff. Um, Looking to see how much allowance I have, how big of a hem I can make here before I sew this thing and end up with not enough material. So what I was saying is so. I concealed that seam with all this webbing when I'm and then I'm going to conceal the webbing because it's not multicam with this piece of cordura to make it all matchy match, you know, all color match. And I think I can pre sew this. We know it's inch and a half webbing, so I think I can just pre sew this right now to one and a half.
either going to work perfectly or it's not going to. <laughs> I'm going to vote for perfect. Every time I edit one of these, I go, he just said, man, it never happens. But it always seems to happen. Now this is getting thicker, right? I'm going through two layers, four layers of cordura on the corners, two layers of webbing here, three layers of webbing here, plus foam. That's the tornado. That's the tornado. Little corners there up a little bit. I want to put some more thread in there, kind of hold that down, make sure it's nice and flat. Now, you need a left side and a right side. So, let's put this up here so we can identify and make sure that we don't make the mistake of making um, one to the same side.
shit. Remember when I said hold that up there so I make sure I don't make two the same side? There it is. buried that thread in there it does not want to come out because it's spongy yep I just cut the cut the quarter of the webbing there Good thing we're covering this up because there's a little hole through that webbing. You'll never see it, never know it was there. So my feed dogs, because <clears throat> it's so thick, it doesn't want to feed backwards. So I would recommend to you that you turn the work around and sew the other direction, especially if you're not comfortable yet with the machine, because if you're pulling on that, it's a good chance you're going to break that needle. So better safe than sorry. While you're trying to save a few seconds by not turning the work around, you're going to lose hours if you knock that machine out of time.
I don't like how that corner is sticking up right there, so I'm going to... Make sure that's tacked down there. And actually, now that I think about it, I think we actually have been taking these legs of webbing and wrapping the quarter around it, but it'll look it'll look the same. It'll also function the same. Okay. Told them what it was. Yeah, I just want to look how I've been doing these. How uh, I made the first one of these, and then they've all been duplicated, so they're all the same. Now, when I'm putting this PALS webbing on here, this is webbing we made. We showed you how to make this, and what it is is a piece of quarter of folded over and then covered in edge tape. So there's two layers of Cordura, one layer of edge tape here. And when I fold it, that becomes four and two. So there's some bulk there. And then we're throwing through all of this stuff also, all the foam, all the Cordura. So I'm just sewing slowly because I don't want to bust that needle. And I also don't want it to shift the work. And then when you're setting pals, wherever you're doing it, just use a gauge, right? I use normally one inch webbing. I don't have any one inch webbing out here, but I know that this was made through our machine, so I know it's spot on at one inch also, so I'll use that as my gauge. Now, here, I'm going to use the tip of this screwdriver here to hold this in place, and then walk right up on it. Once I get a needle strike or two through that, I can let go of it, and then make sure same thing. I can kind of push the work down also, compressing it. Try to get it tacked in, and then I can work it backwards and forwards there. same thing here. I'm just going to fold that edge under. Make sure we're lined up. Hold this in place. And I'm not going to walk up on the work. I'm going to start on top of the work, get a needle strike in there. That'll lock it. And then I can compress it a little bit to get it started. And then I can work backwards on it. Forward. Tack it in. And you can make your pals like this. You could take this even and make it hang over much wider with a loop on the side. So you could use it for com routing. You could do whatever you want with yours. Um, you could also put pals all the way up should you want to. What I found when we were doing that is nobody used them. I gave so many options. And we just, and we'd see them out in the wild or we'd see them in training on ranges and stuff. We were putting so much time and money into things and nobody utilized it so over time we deleted pieces and stuff and the less you have to put in there uh, the more your profit margin you can you can downward depart your retail price if you want to but chances are you're going to sell just as many either way
And remember, this is this is just how we do it. You don't have to do it this way. You can build yours however you want. A lot of guys learning how to sew also. Um, they'll look at something that works and it's exactly maybe how they want it, but they will change it in fears that somebody says they copied their stuff. Man, I don't give a shit. If, if this H set right here is the best H set you've ever used and you're gonna build one for yourself, and this is how you want it, if, if best world, this is how you would build it, don't change your shit because you're worried somebody's going to say you copied this H set. If this is the best one that you want, you make that motherfucker how you want it. If you think you can improve on it, by all means, improve on it. Hell, if you build one after watching this video and you're like, I built exactly what you built and added this other thing or changed this and this is why I think it's that way, shit, you tell me. Maybe we'll change ours to be just like yours. That's a common, if there's one thing I say when we're building product, especially new product, it's I think we can do better. And uh, after many, many years, we are to the point on a lot of stuff um, where we couldn't make it better. Or if we did make it better, it priced us completely out of our market. So you do what you want to do. Now this piece of uh, the H set, the other piece will go here. And the reason I have this here, the hook is facing up so that when you ex extend this, this hook Velcro is not on your body side. It's not wearing through your t-shirt. It's not eating your collar up. It's faced up. Now, if you were going to run this and expose some of this, if you're huge, right? You'd be a giant motherfucker if you're running it like this. Um, but you could take some opposing Velcro and just put it there and then it's not snagging on all your shit. And a lot of companies don't do this. This is, this is a lot of labor, believe it or not, to make it adjustable. A lot of companies, when you buy their shit, it just fucking fits. Like it fits you or it doesn't fit you, and either way, you're going to use it. And most people, when you don't give them the option, they don't know any better. They're, they just use it, and that's how it's always been. Back in the day, um, when I was younger, you paid more to get an automatic transmission. Just here, pop that thread. Mm -hmm. uh, you paid more to get an automatic transmission. So if you're a kid buying a your first car or truck, man, a lot of times it costs more, so you didn't get an automatic transmission. And a lot of people didn't know shit about an automatic transmission, right? So you just you drove a five speed and you didn't know no better. And uh, nowadays. If car companies don't even make a 5, 6 speed, 10 speed, whatever, all you get is an automatic. Well, you can't jump start. You can't bump start an automatic, right? You can't just put that motherfucker in neutral, get a couple friends to push it, pop the clutch, and go. But you don't know no difference. And that's how this shit is. You don't know any different because you never had any different. And when you give people a lot of options, they spend a lot of time... Uh, changing their shit around every time so they never become really good or proficient with anything because they most people don't train a lot and when they do train their gear is always different so they're out there fucking with their gear rather than you know learning good habits and making things second nature man it is not wanting to go it's snagging on something there I must have a burr I said that last week too A lot of times when you get a burr, if you just keep sewing, that burr will go away. But that's coming from a dude who, when I was buying needles, right, we were buying, your needles come in a card like this, and there's 10 of these cards in a pack. I never saw a pack of them motherfuckers until I was probably 30 years old in my life. I was buying, <laughs> I was buying cards of 10. I wasn't buying packs of needles for a long, long time. So I wasn't changing needles. You get in, 
you get in a lot of big factories they change needles every morning um, a lot of big factories and I don't think they they don't seem to exist anymore but they used to have a dude and all he would do is go around and when they would change out the thread color on the line or the type of thread they had a dude that would roll around with a cart and he would change needles every morning and change thread and pick up trash some places that might still exist but I'll bet it don't no more but needless to say we always worked through our problems. I should say I worked through my problems because I didn't have employees for a long, long time. And if you're starting a business and you're like, I want to scale and have employees, you mark my words. You might disagree with me right now, but once you have employees, you'll be like, I see what he was talking about. Employees, while they can be the most wonderful thing in your life, they will also be the most frustration that you ever experience in your life. So if you've made it to this point in this video, uh, we have guys all the time that are like, how do I attach the hydro carrier? And I, I feel like, motherfucker, you own a gun. If you can't figure out how to put the hydro carrier on here, you probably need a different line of work um, or hobby. But the hydro carrier comes with straps and that strap routes through this webbing right here. And that's why we don't sew this, right? It's a channel. You put it here. If your hydro carrier hangs too low, you route that webbing under here and you go to this piece of webbing here. And if it's still too low, you go past this one or under this one to the next one. And that's what that's there for, right? Because that's on the back. It comes up on the top here or behind your shoulders. Now the pals on the front, what are those for? We see guys put all kinds of goober shit there. Like in the old days, they'd hang a linsatic compass, you know, a big fucking flip up compass with tritium and shit in it. Well, what if you, you know, for a long time, you never saw any Vietnam movies where they were switching shoulders and stuff. Um, and, you know, it gets in the way sometimes. I mean, a lot of dudes are gonna, well, I, I don't need to teach you how to handle your weapon. You, you know what you've learned. Um, but those pals there, what you can do with those you can route your camelback tube under them. You can run your comm wire down to your PTT and back up to your headset. Um, or you can run cord dominators or bungee, right? Just some bungee and you can route through the bungee. Um, or run, you know, tourniquets there. You can run bungee, put a tourniquet there. There's all kinds of stuff you can do with them. <clears throat> you do you, boo-boo, but that's, that's what these are here for. Um, and we put them on here because that's how... Uh, when we designed this H set, we designed this H set when we did the NSW chest rig, and this is what the guys from SEAL Team 3 and 7 were asking for. Um, they had some London Bridge rigs that had some of these features on there, and they wanted more features on there. Um, so that's how we ended up with the amount of pals that we have here and the elastic that I'm going to put on here in a second. That's why that's there, because that's what they asked for. Um, and then we just put it across the board later on other harnesses and uh, that's how we've always done it. There might be some super uh, cool thing out there that I haven't seen, but A lot of companies will make eight sets that are a little more stripped down because it's just labor, man. Every time you have to put a piece of something on there and you guys um, doing like small hobby stuff, custom shop stuff, you know, out of your house, tell you, buddy, this is what John Carver, the owner of Eagle, told me when I was probably 20 years old. And I said, I'm going to have a, a big shop like you. He's, and he put his arm around my shoulder. He said, let me tell you some things, kid. And one of the things he told me that day 
He said he made more money personally and had more happiness and a better time with his family when he was a smaller shop uh, with 10 employees than when he later had multiple shops with thousands of employees. Um, the company, while it can make millions of dollars, that doesn't necessarily mean you have millions of dollars. You have to look at how much you pay yourself now. That's a whole different topic of conversation, the business aspect of business. Um, but all you dudes that are doing custom stuff, when your customer is like, I want this thing with Velcro here. And you're like, okay, $100. And then the next customer is like, I want this thing with Velcro here. And then I want a piece of Velcro here. And you're like, okay, $100. Stop doing that shit. Everything you have to put on, every feature you add, every piece of Velcro, it's five bucks. It's five bucks. You have to cut the Velcro. You have to have the Velcro. You have to sew the Velcro on. And at some point, you might have to warranty the Velcro also. Five bucks minimum. Preferably ten, fifteen dollars, right? So the next customer is like, I want this thing with Velcro. And I, my friend had this piece of Velcro. But I want to be better than my friend, so I need this piece of Velcro. Okay, $100. $105, $110, but it's just a piece of Velcro. What is your time worth, right? And where else can your, that dude go and get that extra piece of Velcro, right? Because if he had to go to a store in town, most of them couldn't do it. And what are they gonna charge him to do it, right? So you need to have that, be cognizant going into this. If you are comfortable with your price that you are charging, you are not charging enough money. If you don't have enough business, your price might have to be better until you're better. But if you have more business than you want to do, then your price goes up, right? You can always, you can always run promotions or whatever, but most of you guys, hobby dudes, you're not at the level or position that you have to do that, right? You have so many hours you're gonna put into this, so make your money. Dudes are like, hey, I want this thing made. I'm like, okay, $1,000, and they're like, but it's a bag. That's right. And every time I take custom orders and I tell somebody it starts at $1,000, I do that to weed the customers out because I don't want to do it. And inevitably, there are 20 dudes that are like, okay, I, I acknowledge $1,000 minimum. Here's what I want. Okay, it's 1,500 bucks. Once you're at that threshold, those customers, they don't question the price, right? Those are qualified customers. And here's why it's $1,000. On the weekends is the only time I leave this property for the most part and go eat sushi with my wife. And that's a 90 minute drive to Nashville or a four hour drive to somewhere else or a six hour drive to Atlanta, right? So you're not paying me a thousand dollars to make the bag. You're paying me a thousand dollars to sit my ass in this chair on a Saturday and not go eat sushi with my wife. And the truth is, it's not a thousand bucks anymore. It's way higher than that because I'm at a point where I don't have to do that shit anymore. I build stuff for friends. Um, so if I'm building stuff for a client, it, it's a lot of money, right? What is What does it cost for me to not go out and do what I want to do with my wife on the weekend? And I'm very lucky. A lot of you dudes are probably in a different position. I've been with my wife over 20 years off and on like we've we broke up a few times right and we know what that looks like and things are better this way so it's it's not ever her where she's mad where i'm sitting and doing something for a customer she's here working she's actually right out there right now working and her and i just do this that's why we work this is our life and we've built everything we like to do into business somehow so if you can do that we also guys we have a we have a couple private podcasts. It's worth getting, becoming a member. You can hear most of them for one dollar. It's on the membership area or join or whatever it says. We have a couple of other levels. There's a five dollar, a ten dollar, and I think a fifteen dollar level. But Amanda and I do a question and answer, and it's about homesteading. It's about relationship. It's about raising kids. It's about running a business, which she's been involved in my business twenty plus years out of the thirty-five years now. So. We also do one called, um, is it marriage advice or relationship advice? I don't know what it's called. What's it called? It's marriage advice. But it, it kind of like dudes are like, hey, how do I get my wife on board? And, and typically I'm like, you married the wrong bitch. You better go find one that likes it, right? But we realized it was kind of just fun at first, like silly, you know? Um, but 
we realized that they're actually we actually do have real advice how do you guys work together in the same building how do you what happens when one of you has a fight who makes the final this shit like that right and it, it varies right the truth is on some stuff she has the final say and some stuff i have the final say but what it really comes down to is i said this a long time ago and she pointed this out the other day and i had forgotten i'd said it do you want to be right or do you want to be happy right and some stuff you have to be right you know if it's into the world kind of shit you better make sure you're the right motherfucker. But if it's just arguing to argue and it's not going to matter, does it really matter as long as you're happy at the end of the day and there's not a loser, right? Um, something catastrophic. So anyway, that's that's a whole nother. But we have those conversations um, on our membership area. So you might check it out. You might try it for a month. It's $1. I know there's some cheap motherfucker. One of you motherfuckers. You're, you're picking thread up off the ground because it's 24 wants, inches long. Who wants five dollars for Velcro and now a dollar for all the information yeah. of running a business for 30 years? Who does this guy think he I is? I love it when they say that. Oh, I'm the dude that's been in business. Also, the guy you're watching. Who, who, who is you? this guy? Yeah, who is this guy? Well, I looked at your channel and we clearly don't know who you are. How many followers did he have? Two? Yeah, two. That's how it always is, man. I'm the guy with three million combined followers across the internet. I must be saying something somebody wants to hear. Sometimes too, when you're sewing on the edge of something or like foam and it compresses, it'll kind of want to sew at an angle. So if you, if it looks like I'm sewing, if the work's kind of like crooked, that's because that's the amount that it's slipping to the side. So I'm compensating for that. That's why it looks like that. Thank you. I knew that was down there. take this video and speed it up so it's only five minutes gotcha. <laughs> they'll be like but I couldn't see anything in a while a good breeze just it feels so good too because it is hot in here <laughs> this damn led lights aren't supposed to be hot can you it's very hot show them pull out and show them these lights show them can you focus in on this and show them what this looks like this light above us is so bright that it literally will blind you for two <laughs> hours if you look at it so we have this diffuser and it's still too bright so then we have this waffle grid on there that kind of makes it bearable, but holy shit, is it hot. It's making your body fat so low though. Who my, needs a sauna? My body fat is already so low. I walk yeah, around, imagine. I walk around at like two weeks from contest. Always contest ready. Is it believable? Yeah, I mean it is, you just...
You know who fucking looks like contest ready right now is fucking Dana. Holy Dana and Bailey. Yeah. Holy shit. What a beast. And she always sort of does. Did you see, uh, is it Kenny Kazoo or what's his name? <laughs> what's his name? Kenny KO. Oh, it's not, what's, it, what's the KO stand for? Uh, I don't know. Kenny Kazoo. Anyways, did you see, uh, there was something somewhere and he popped in on there. I don't know if it was a picture, he, it was a picture of him with Dana. So they were at some FitCon or something, right? And uh, Rob said, what I want to know is what Kenny KO thinks. And he never really did directly answer the question. There were some people on there kind of shit talking, but he never like said one way or another, or at least I didn't see him say it. Because Kenny KO made a video about her, right? A long time ago, right? Yeah. Well, not that long ago, like last year. Oh, when she had Rabdo or after that? Maybe around that. I feel like when most dudes or fitness athletes, not not her, I have no doubt she had fucking rhabdo. But I think when most dudes say that, it's just like, nah, you were a weak bitch or you did some stupid shit. So you're like, yo, I was in the hospital with rhabdo. Mm, maybe, maybe. Mm -hmm. Hey, don't get into CrossFit. CrossFit, yeah, they have a lot of rhabdo going on. That's what happened to her. She started working out with the CrossFit. Oh, that's true. Yeah, that's there. right. That's right. I feel like uh, if you do a lot of CrossFit, your butthole falls out. Probably a lot of squatting, mm. a lot of a lot of a lot of butthole stuff going on in CrossFit. Look around my gym. Notice you see no CrossFit shit in here. You know how you'd know if I had CrossFit stuff in here? How? I would tell you. I'd have all the CrossFit shit. Like, I'd have CrossFit painted on the outside of the building, and then my license mm. plate would say like CrossFit or Kippy. I'd, I'd have like a, a CrossFit tattoo. You change your name to Kip. I'd have some CrossFit face set tattoos. Don't hey. trip. If you if you do CrossFit, don't worry. Oh, yeah. Keep I love to man. watch it. I just don't want to do it with you. You don't want me showing up to CrossFit shit anyways, because if I show up there, you won't have a chance. No chance whatsoever. That's right. I'll be the fucking CrossFit king. What's that dude lives out by you? Rich Froning? Yeah. He'll be like, John, please stop coming to the CrossFit meets. I need you to quit coming to the CrossFit games. You're winning too many of them. Reebok's giving you too much money. Is that the big sponsor, Reebok? Yeah. Is that his, his deal? Mm -hmm. He probably hates Reebok. That's right. They just paid him more than Nike. I think by Reebok. Is it? It's like they own the space. Like Nike and basketball kind of deal. I do want to see that. What was that movie with uh, the most mediocre athlete ever? Was it Michael Jordan? Is it a Michael? I think it was about Michael Jordan. I don't know. When uh, Nike, uh, just do it. Who was just do it? Michael Jordan. Yeah. Yeah. Have you seen the uh, murder case of Michael Jordan's dad? No. He was murdered on the side of the road going to a hotel because he had a gambling problem. Uh-uh. Yeah. I think it was on like a forensic file show or something. Or? Uh, I've not seen it. People need to start asking questions that I can read while we're doing this. We can do it live. Okay, now these you could have, uh, and here's another thing, right? I'm about to edge tape this and then tuck the tails. Why did we do that? Because back in the day, I could have just ran it another inch and folded it under and caught this all in one seam and sewn it on and saved the time. I don't know why we fucking did it. I couldn't even tell you why I did it that way. Probably because we saw somebody else do it 30 years ago this way. Also, where in the fuck did all the straight T-pins go that used to exist in the world? Because you can't find them anymore. All you find is these big, massive T-pins, and they leave a hole in the webbing, right? They Like the normal-ass T-pin that you grew up with for the last hundred years, they don't exist. So they're all like short and fat, 
or they're long. It's like they can't make that skinnier material anymore, That whatever that webbing was yeah. they were using. I'll show you what I'm talking about when we walk out there. You'll notice it when I say it. You'll be like, oh yeah. See, that's a lot of that's a lot of work. You gotta burn that. I know somebody's like, what are you talking about? Dude, when you're building fucking 200 of these things, every little step matters. Okay, so I'm gonna kick this in just a hair, just slightly right. So I folded it in. They're straight. I'm gonna kick it in just like a gnat's ass. You like that one? Love it. Just a cunt hair, right? Just a cunt hair. And when you were a kid on a job site and you heard that, you'd laugh. You like thought that was the funniest thing the first time you heard that. For some reason, my dad said nut hair all the nut time. Nut hair? Yeah. Mm. They always say, yeah, you know, about a nut hair off. A nut hair. I think everything I measured was a nut hair off. Yeah, but when they had Playboy when your dad was a kid, they had bushes too. So yeah. things are different now. I think, I think that... It is required that women, well, men, I guess, too, but it is required that you shave so cleanly that your great-grandkids probably can't even grow hair anymore. All right, so I'm going to put these, I'm going to put these right here. Non-dominant shoulder, right? Boom, boom. Down leads, whatever, on the left side. You can put these on both sides. You can put them on one side. You can put them on the side your client asks for them on. Whatever you want. You can make them open with Velcro. You can, you can do whatever you want. Just remember, whatever you do, make sure you're getting paid for it. I didn't tuck that under enough when I kicked those out. Bring that inboard a little bit. Okay, there is your slim padded H set. I've not made one of these shit. I don't even know when the last time I made one of these was. It's been a long time, years and years. Um, adjust across here. If you need to make it shorter, you can cut off between these slots. This is routing through here, as are all these pals. This foam is now quilted through in many slots it is super tight a lot of companies don't put their adjustments here right because it's way less work if you just sew a buckle on here and not have to do all this shit we did this from day one we wanted the webbing here so you didn't have all that webbing that had to be cut off you could do you could control and dominate this webbing and just wrap it up, tape it up, gaffers tape, riggers tape, safety pins, zip ties, whatever. So you always had this. It was easier to control this webbing than all the bulk on the rig. Now we've done that from day one and we've stayed with the same plastic so that everything we've always built will interchange with everything else. 
we're one of the few companies that actually have the adjustments here. That's because it's easier to build it this way. It's much easier. Uh, I mean, it's easier to build it the other way. What am I saying? It's easier to build it the other way. So we built it this way because it was the best way to build it. And uh, all of our stuff is all interchangeable with everything we've always made. Uh, this plastic is still interchangeable with all of the national stock uh, number stuff. So if you had a Marine on ship that lost a buckle, he could pull it off of an old CFP 90 pack or any of the issue equipment and it would lock in with the buckles we use. That's why we've always stayed with this hardware. So this is what it looks like when it's done. You're gonna take, get it set where you want it. You're gonna take this excess webbing and run it through here, double bypass it like so. And then you can you know, do whatever you want past there with it. But that's what it looks like. And now you know how to build it. And for the one dude out there that's thinking you can't do it, you can. It'll look, it'll look nasty the first few times, but it's never going to look good until you do it poorly a few times. And anything worth doing well is worth doing poorly at first. That's it. That's what I got for you. So the slim padded H harness, it adjusts on all four corners. You have plenty of adjustment for this. Um, you cannot, there is not enough webbing here to take this and run this as a suspender to the belt. It is for a chest rig for sure. This is the rig that came with the NSW, still comes with the NSW rigs, comes with some of our bigger rigs. The micro rigs do not come with this. This is an update to them or an, an add-on to them. Um, it costs extra. But with this, you can run our hydro carrier uh, with this system. You cannot run it with a micro rig without the H harness. The H harness is faster to put on and take off, doesn't have the straps that twist, uh, and it's much more comfortable. We've never put one of these on a guy at class where he didn't actually buy the H harness. Um, you have all of the adjustment across here, so you can go from skinny boy to big boy. It's got eight inches of adjustment right there. Um, we sew these slots in here so that you can cut them off and then burn them, sear them, if you do need to make it smaller. You can make it larger just by opening it up and you can put a piece of Velcro over here so this doesn't snag on stuff. You have channels through here. Here and here is a channel. And that's where you're gonna run the strapping for your hydro carrier. You also have pals or channel here, 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 and here. If you put your hydro carrier attached to here and it's hanging too low, run it under here and to this one or this one. Now you can also use this to route camelback tube, hydro carrier tubing. You can run your comm wires down to your push to talk and back up to your ear pro, um, however you want to set it up. You can run, you can actually attach uh, molly stuff or stuff with malice clips here, for instance, a tourniquet pouch or whatever you want to put on there um, that you feel you need right there. You can also just run bungee around your tourniquets or just use it for, um, you know, calm wire dominator, hydro carrier tubing, stuff like that. We also have this here. You can build yours however you want it, but this is how we build ours. And this is how we've done this. A harness has been this way for over 20 years. We've never had anybody request to change it or alter it. Um, and it's still going strong today. This is, this is how we build it. You can build yours however you want. Um, a lot of guys, like I said earlier, a lot of guys get stuck. They, they might love this. This might be their perfect H harness, but they don't want to be the copycat guy, so they're going to change it. Don't change it if it doesn't make it better. If you've got something you want to add to it or change because it's better, more power to you. But don't worry about copying this thing just so that it looks different, right? There's so many guys stuck on that. If you're going to market with it, different thing maybe, but if, if you're building one for yourself, man, just build whatever you want and don't, don't worry about what any of these other turds say to you.